In this video, we're going to be looking at indices. Before we get into that, let's just have a quick look at this. Suppose I wanted to do this addition. Now, this is a pane to write out. Is there a shorter way for me to write that out? Hopefully, you know that that is just the same as 7 multiplied by 3. We can use this multiplication symbol to represent repeated addition. And this is much shorter and easier to write than this. But what if I wanted to do this calculation? Well, we have a neat way of writing that too. We write that like this. We say this as 3 to the power of 7. This number 3 here is known as the base and the number 7 here is known as the index. The index tells us how many copies of the base we're multiplying together. Just note, the index is normally written a little bit smaller and raised above the base. And we have one more vocabulary note. We've got the base, the index, and the whole thing together is known as a power. Let's take a look at the questions. In question A, we need to work out 2 to the power of 5. 2 to the power of 5 is 2 multiplied by 2, multiplied by 2, multiplied by 2, multiplied by 2. And we can work that out in our heads. 2 times 2 is 4. Multiplied by 2 gets us to 8. Multiplied by 2 again, that gets us to 16. And multiplied by 2 again, that gets us to 32. Now, question B might look like a bit of a pain to do. 2 to the power of 10 is this. Now, you could work it out in stages like we did before, but here are a couple of other ideas. Firstly, you could spot that 2 to the power of 10 is actually just 2 to the power of 5 multiplied by 2 to the power of 5 again. Now, we know 2 to the power of 5 is 32. So 2 to the power of 5 multiplied by 2 to the power of 5 is just going to be 32 times 32. And that might be a calculation you prefer to do. Whichever way you do it, you're going to get an answer of 1024. I'm just going to show you how you could work this out using a calculator. We simply tap 2, use the x to the power of button, and then type in the index 10. Hit equals and we get our answer. Let's move on to question C. 10 to the power of 6 is 10 multiplied by 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 10. And hopefully, without needing a calculator, you can see that that will be 1 million. In question D, we are working out 5 to the power of 2. That simply means we are working out 5 times 5, which is 25. It's worth noting here that raising something to the power of 2 is something we do so often that we give it a special name. We could call this 5 to the power of 2, or more commonly we call it 5 squared. Squaring a number or raising it to the power of 2 is something we do so often that the calculator has a special button for it. Just next to the x to the power of button, we have the x squared button. And you can see here how we can work out 5 squared using the calculator. OK, pause the video and have a go at question E for yourself. You should have found that 5 to the power of 4 is 625. Let's have a look at just a few more questions. In question F, we need to work out one third to the power of two, or one third squared, as we would more commonly say it. One third squared is simply one third multiplied by one third. 
Multiplying fractions is easy, remember. We can multiply our numerators. 1 times 1 is 1. And we can multiply our denominators. 3 times 3 is 9. So we get our answer of 1 ninth. Now, I'm just going to show you how you would do this on a calculator. You could, of course, type in 1 third times 1 third, but you could also use the squared button, as you can see in this video. OK, now have a go at question G for yourself. Here's what you should have found. Either, working by hand, you should have got 5 ninths multiplied by 5 ninths is 25 over 81, or you could have simply typed in 5 ninths on your calculator in brackets and then hit the x squared button and got the same answer. Moving on to question H, we've got 1 tenth cubed, which you can work out as 1 tenth multiplied by 1 tenth multiplied by 1 tenth, which would give you 1 over 1,000. Or you could work it out on the calculator like this. Here's the last question we need to work out negative 7 squared. This equals negative 7 multiplied by negative 7. And if you work that out, you will get positive 49. Before we finish, I'd like you to try working out negative 7 squared on your calculator and see what it tells you. Notice that you get different answers depending on whether you use brackets or not. What we wanted was negative 7 squared. So that's negative 7 multiplied by negative 7. Using brackets, make sure that your calculator understands that and it gives you the correct answer, 49. If you don't use brackets, you'll see your calculator tells you that it is negative 49. But what your calculator is actually doing here is working out 7 squared and then finding the negative of 7 squared. Now 7 squared is 49 and the negative of 49 is negative 49. Your calculator is trying to be smart here by applying the correct order of operations. It's trying to apply the index before this negative symbol. So why am I making such a big deal? Well, this on the right is a trap that loads of students fall into, and you don't want to be one of those. What you need to do is take loads of care, especially when you have a negative base that you want to raise to a power. In these situations, really, really make sure you use brackets when typing your calculations into the calculator.